Welcome to Reread. We're on James Lucino's Millennium Falcon. Uh, this one kind of weaves through continuity as James Lucino is known to do. It kind of brings you to the prequels about what the Falcon was doing. And I think it ties it into that sneak appearance in episode three that we saw. And it kind of talks about what it was doing there on Coruscant, what mission it was. It was Jadak who had a mission, but we're told he wrecked and died. But then later on, he wakes up out of a 60 year coma. And I can't remember, but somehow he's retained a lot of his youth, even though he's very old. He must be uh, 99 years old or 100 years old, but he didn't look a day over 40 or something. And so he wakes up. He was on a mission to find a treasure that would restore the Republic's honor. And they don't know what it is, but someone, an investor, has been keeping him alive for decades to find out if he ever regains consciousness what happened to that treasure and where it's located. Now, what Jadak knows, it's located on the Falcon. The Falcon has, is the key to unlock the treasure. So just a, this is a good uh, treasure hunting novel is what it is. Meanwhile, Han and Leia and Alana, their granddaughter, decide to go on their own little adventure to find out the history of the Falcon. And so both of these stories are going on simultaneously. Jadak trying to He's working from the beginning to you know Han Solo. Han Solo is working from, well, let me see. I got it from Lando. Who did Lando get it from? And then they keep going back and forth. Lando, Lando gives his person. Uh, by the way, they go to uh, uh, Ocean, the flame winds of Ocean. They go back to see all the haunts of old Lando Calrissian. And Lando reminisces that it's been 50 years since he set foot in that sector. And I was like, Whoa, <laughs> it hasn't been 50 years since I read the book, but that's how long ago it was for Lando. It just makes you realize how aged these people are. And it talks about Vufi Ra, too. Vufi Ra is mentioned, too. I'd forgotten there was so many land, there was so much Lando L. Neil Smith uh, love from James Lucino. Now, it makes sense. James Lucino was a fan of these books. In fact, he was personal friends with Brian Daly. So he probably gave L. Neil Smith some love and put uh, a lot of his. Uh, stories, a lot of Lando's past comes back in, in the form of those stories there. He kind of reminisces over them, which I thought was really nice. Um, now, from the previous owner, I think it's Crix or Chris or whatever, they move it back to he got it from a guy from the circus. The guy from the circus got someone who worked in the medical field. The lady from the medical field got it from someone who had repaired it and whatever or crashed or whatever. And that's the same person that Jadok had found. And that's the person who named it the Millennium Falcon. You know, before that, it was named the Second Chance, and when Jadak had it, it was the Stellar Envoy. And so Jadak finally meets the man who uh, named him Millennium Falcon as Han Solo hits the planet. He thinks that this is Han Solo, and he goes, "No, no, no, I'm not. I'm wait. The owner's here now. He doesn't know Jadak doesn't know who Han Solo is. He's been in a coma for sixty years, so he doesn't know. So it's kind of funny when his partner, who he hires to kind of help him, goes, "The Han Solo." Are you serious? You don't know Han Solo. <laughs> it's really funny. And uh, meanwhile, they meet with Han Solo. Jadot pretends to be the person who named the Falcon, and he's not. He's just running a smoke screen so that his partner can steal the Millennium Falcon, which is very hard. They have to get a slicer droid. Then they have to get a some kind of special decryptor, too. It's costing an arm and a leg to break all the Falcon's uh, 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 defenses. But they finally get through. Uh, they uh, approach 3PO, who's left on the Falcon, but then they get ambushed by two other people, the people who've been following Jadot, to, just to get to the Falcon, to get to the key, you know, to figure out what the key is to get the treasure. And that's when, it's a funny scene where his partner comes back in to the bar that Han Solo and Jadok are talking in. And Jadok is like surprised he's there. And uh, he's covered in grease. He went, uh, so yeah, uh, I wasn't able to, Get that problem fixed. He went, yeah, we've had problems in our, on our ship lately. He went, I'm very surprised to see you here. <laughs> I thought it was great. Uh, James Lucino has a lot of good comedy in this too. But, you know, they they pretend that, you know, oh no, well, the Lane and Falcon just got taken off. But it had a safety feature in it that brought it right back down. The crooks easily get caught. But there's a big hoity-toity lawyer that Leia knows that kind of shows up out of the blue and represents him and gets him off the hook. And Leia's kind of uh, wondering, wait a minute, where did this guy come from? How can these crooks afford him? There's more going on with the story. And then she figures there's something going on with Jadot because it feels like he was telling he was telling the truth, but it felt like he was telling someone else's story. So Leia's already on to him. Han thinks he's friendly, brings him onto the Falcon. 
uh, 3PO immediately recognizes his partner as the guy who tried to steal the Falcon initially and tries to speak. But then in classic fashion, Han Solo basically cuts him off and says, Goldenrod, that's enough. Shut up. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, later on, Jadot does enter in the code into the Falcon. It sets off the transponder, which is actually in Han Solo's pocket now, not inside the Falcon. And that's a really funny scene, too. Uh, that they get discovered, they get uh, revealed as the original crooks who tried to steal the Falcon. Jadot comes clean, tells them about the treasure, where they finally go to seek the treasure. And it turns out to be, and I remember this clearly, it turns out to be the emblem of the Republic from the old Republic days. And the there's a fake one put up when they reconstructed the building or whatnot. And Palpatine never won, worried about getting, no one really worried where the original went. And so this was the original worth, you know, hundreds of thousands of credits or whatever. It's priceless. It's a priceless piece of history. And of course, the uh, billionaire behind Jadok's, you know, kind of uh, captivity or keeping him alive uh, comes around. But then they find out that it's a fake. The seal itself is a fake. So the construction crew themselves probably just stole it is what they're thinking. So, of course, it shatters to the ground. They all make it out in time. And uh, go their separate ways. Jock goes a separate way to start his life anew again. And Han, you know, had a little adventure, knows the history of the, the Falcon, and he's happy. And then, of course, it ends with Dala issuing an arrest warrant from Luke. This is going to lead into Fate of the Jedi. But overall, rereading this again, it's a fun, it's a fun adventure. Just, just a single adventurous romp. That James Lucino even rewards the people who read a lot of Star Wars. There's a lot of continuity sewn in there. I remember a friend of mine told me this is his very first novel that he read to get into the EU. I would not suggest anyone read this one first, but he said, I love the Millennium Falcon. And I heard this showed the history of the Millennium Falcon, and I wanted to hear about it. He did admit that while reading it, he felt like he was missing a few things. <laughs> yeah, no joke, because of all the continuity. Not just not just with uh, you know, the previous books, the Lando Calrissian books, Han Solo books, and stuff like that. But it was like references to their children, what had been going on, you know, in the galaxy recently. That's where he was kind of a little bit lost. But he said he overall enjoyed it, and that's what got him into the EU. The Millennium Falcon. But I'll be honest, on its own, it's a really good novel. It's really and, and chronologically. This is the last novel that James Lucino would write. Oh, so sad. But anyway, time to move on to the next series. See you then.